Hey CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today I'm going to teach you how to crochet a textured puff quilt pillow. So uh, a lot of times you'll see these kind of things with fabric um, and they're making quilts out of these beautiful puffs. Um, and I have seen some crochet ones as well and so I decided what if we made them textured? Made them look like almost like patchwork, okay? so. Um, this is what we're doing today. It's really easy. This is a pillow. This could turn into a blanket as well if you wanted to. You could just keep going and make a blanket out of this, not a pillow. But I'm going to show you the exact dimensions today, how to make the puff, how to make the pillow, how long it needs to be, how many you need, all of that stuff for this. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the materials. For your materials today, you're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a darning needle. You're going to need some kind of stitch marker, even if it's just a piece of yarn. And you're going to need a 4.5 millimeter hook. That's what I'm using. Um, because I did use scrap yarn for this, um, some of these are three weight and some of these are four weight. And I'm gonna show you how to make those match up. This is, however, very forgiving. So if you're using your leftover yarn, um, your scrap yarn for this, and you have some cotton and you have some other stuff, you can still do that. You just might need to change your measurements a little bit and I will help you with that, okay? So just to show you these little puffs, um, the size of them, they are approximately about two and a half to three inches, okay? Um, depending upon, you know, how you crochet, your tension, things like that. Uh, for instance, this is a three, uh, a three weight and, and this one right here is a four weight. Okay. So you can tell a little bit of a difference, but I tried to make them at, as close to the same size as I possibly could. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about, um, the pillow that you're going to need. And you're also going to need stuffing, um, to stuff your squares with. I just am using some polyfill. Okay, but I got a travel size pillow from Walmart. It's a mainstay travel size pillow. It's only like $3 and that's we're gonna, what we're gonna put this around, okay? And I will try to link that in the description box below. Um, so what I needed for this pillow was I needed 30 puffs for each side, okay? So in a total, you're going to need 60 puffs. So in every line, there is one, two, three, four, five, six puffs and you're gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, okay? So you're gonna go six across and you're gonna go five rows down, all right? And that'll make more sense too soon. I'm gonna show you how to put it all together. And let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. And we're gonna go ahead and learn how to make one of the puffs, okay? So what you're gonna do is, is you're going to make a slip knot and you're going to chain um, and because this is a weight for yarn, let me go ahead and tell you this real quick. I know y'all hate it when I talk, but I have to explain it to you. This yarn I'm using right now is a weight four, okay? So I'm going to chain um, 14 and I'm going to do seven rows. If I was using my three weight yarn, I would chain 15 and do eight rows. So that's the only difference, okay? So let's go ahead and chain 15. One, two, three, I'm sorry, 14. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, okay? And then into the second chain from the hook, so not this first one, but this second one, we're gonna yarn over go into this first chain right here, I mean the second chain from the hook, and we're going to do a half double crochet. We're gonna pull through all of our loops on our hook. Then we're gonna go into our next chain and do a half double crochet. And into the next, do a half double crochet. And just keep doing half double crochets all the way down. And you should have 13 by the time you get to the end. Okay, 
So we did our 13th half double crochet here in this last stitch, this last chain right here. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to work this way and work over this side as well. So we're basically kind of turning our work instead of um, flipping it around, okay? So in this last stitch now, we've got the 14, we're, I mean the 13, we're going to do one more half double crochet in this last stitch and that counts for our count over the top. So let's just start counting, that's one. And so now we need 12 more across the top because this counts as the 13 that we need on this side, okay? So now we can tighten up and that was one. So two, three, and I'm working over this little piece in the back, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and don't forget this last one, it goes right over here, thirteen, okay? So now we have thirteen on both sides, and now what we're going to do is we're going to place our stitch marker right here in this last stitch that we just did. And now we're going to work into the round and we're gonna keep going around this way. So right here is our first stitch right there. It can be a little hard to find, but look for the one that looks like it's kind of cornered there and that's gonna be your first stitch. And now we're gonna be working a half double crochet into the back loop of this first stitch right here. So you're going to yarn over and go into the back loop and work a half double crochet. And then into the next stitch, you're gonna yarn over and work a half double crochet in the front loop. And the next stitch, you're gonna work a half double crochet in the back loop. And the next stitch, you're gonna work a half double crochet in the front loop. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. working in the back and the front loops, working half double crochets. And you should now have a count of 26 all the way around. And then when we get to our stitch marker, we're gonna pull that out, still working half double crochets into the front and the back alternating. We're gonna put our half double crochet in the front loop. I'm going to turn this where it's facing me like that. So this is on the inside. And then I'm going to put my stitch marker back. Okay. And now we're going to keep doing what we were doing. So in the next stitch, we're going to go into the back loop, half double crochet. In the next stitch, we're gonna go into the front loop, half double crochet, into the back loop, into the front loop, the back, the front, just like this. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around till you get your stitch marker, and then you're gonna take it out, and then you're gonna repeat. So what you want, including this first row right here, including when we did the round here, we're including that. So one, two, we're working on our third now. You want to have seven in total, okay? So once you get to your seventh row, and I get to mine, we're gonna meet right back up again, okay? So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so we completed our seven rows, and now what we're going to do, okay, we've still got our stitch marker in. 
we're going to go into our next stitch because now as you can see we've been working in the round so we've got quite a bit of a uh, uh, non-closure here so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our next stitch and we're going to put a single crochet in the back loop um, and then we're going to go into our next stitch and we're going to put a slip stitch okay and now we can cut off and i want you to leave quite a bit of um about two feet worth of yarn over because we're going to use that to sew this puff together and to sew it to other puffs okay so i want you to do that and then we're going to try to do a little bit of an invisible join here just to make it easier to sew, sew together so we're going to go ahead and pull this out we're going to take our stitch marker out And we're going to go ahead and put our um, our piece of yarn here onto a darning needle. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to skip this stitch right here. We're into this one, so we're going to skip this one, go into the next one, go through both like this. And then we're going to come back around and we're going to go through the back loop of this one, okay? And we're just creating that stitch right there so it looks nice and even, okay? And we're just gonna leave this on right here with our darning needle on it, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some stuffing and this is gonna take some getting used to on your part to know exactly how much to use. But you're literally only gonna use about a handful of stuffing. Um, you don't want these to be super puffy. You just want enough in there to give it some rise, you know, because it is a puff. You are making a quilted textured patchwork puff. So you do want some stuffing in there, but um, you don't want a lot. And over time, you'll find exactly how yours is. So that is just about perfect for me. So I have a little bit of space here, even though it's pushed down. Um, and you see like that? So that's what it looks like once you get the stuffing in there, okay? And so now I'm going to take my darning needle, I'm gonna turn my work this way, where this uh, piece of yarn is facing in towards me, and then I'm gonna work my way over to the side, okay? Because we wanna sew this together. So I'm gonna go in and out of these stitches. I don't wanna pull real tight. We're just going in and out, just getting over here to the side, okay? And once I get into this side right here, then I can start sewing. So I'm gonna go right into here, like this. And then I'm gonna go into my next one, like this. So I'm going in and out. You might have to push your you're stuffing a little bit in there. I'm gonna go out this one. And through this one. Just like this. I'm going under both um, of my V's there. And I just want this to look nice and even so that when I join it, um, it looks nice and seamless, okay? And so right down to the end, and that's all there is to these puffs, okay? And now I've still got this long piece if I need this for sewing. So you're gonna do each puff the same. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you how to sew these together to make one of your rounds for your pillow, okay? So like I said, you're gonna need six So these are the colors I'm using. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna start with this one that we just did. And this is how we're gonna sew these together. So I'm going to use the leftover yarn that I have for each of my puffs for this, okay? Some of them you won't need, but some of them you will. So I'm gonna line this up, and as you can see, this one is a little bit bigger than this one because of the weight of the yarn. So I'm gonna pull that out, but it will come together fine. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna sew these together. So I'm simply going to go in to my other side over here, 
and then I'm gonna go in over here. So I'm working through both of these edges. And again, I'm using the in and out technique with sewing here. I'm sure there's a name for it. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is the mattress stitch. I, can't, I really can't remember, I'm sorry. But anyways, we're just going in and out. This doesn't have to be exact, but I am trying to get under uh, the foundation here of our work. And then I'm gonna go through one final time. I'm not just gonna leave that hanging just like that, okay? And so this is what the front looks like. It's pretty seamless, looks pretty cool. So that's why we're doing that like that. Let me show you another one. So I'll pull in another one. So I'll pull in the green. And I'll use the leftover piece that I have. And then I can either go from this way or this way, doesn't matter. But now these ends are gonna look a little different, but it's okay, we're still gonna show them together. But so now this is the right way facing me and this way is the back way, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna turn it where this is going to face the exact direction it should. So I'm gonna go, I'm going to turn it this way, I'm gonna flip this over, and then I'm gonna line these up together. Okay, so that this back is facing this back. And then again, I'm going to do the same thing. Even though this looks a little different, I'm doing the exact same sewing technique, going in and out here, just like this. Don't forget to get the ends here so that the sides are done up, okay? And then you're just gonna leave that to hang there. And again, now we have another piece on, all right? And so then I'm gonna bring in another color. I'll show you another one. I'm gonna bring in my yellow. And I'm going to go line it up with this part again. I'm gonna make sure it's facing the way it needs to face for these two, for this to show in the back and the right side to be in the front. This one again is a little bit smaller than this one because it was a higher weight yarn. So now again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go in and out, starting right here at the end. Just like this. And I just want these to line up perfectly. So I'm making sure to go all the way to my end here. All right, just like that. And see, that's what it looks like, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two that I need to make my six. And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to piece these together for the long part of it, okay? and it'll all make sense. And then we're gonna actually put the pillow together. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so I've raised up my camera so that you can see all of this. We finished this row here, and this is what it looks like, our row of puffs. They're all sewed together. And now I'm gonna show you how, and I've, as you can see, I've already got half completed, but I wanna show you how to sew these rows together, okay? Here is one that is already completed, and this is what it looks like. Okay, 
And then as you can see, this is what the back looks like. Now what I've done is because this is a pillow, there are some of these that I have knotted off that were in the middle. I knotted it off like three times and then cut them not so close that they would come undone but I did cut them and that's because this is all gonna be on the inside of my work and I just wanted it to be smooth. You could even leave your ends, okay? But the ends that you have on the bottom here, um, which you will have some that are on the bottom and on the sides, those are the ones that you need to work in because you can't, you can't really get them into the inside of the pillow, okay? So I wanted to let you know that, um, but because it is a pillow and it's gonna be on the inside, I did knot some of them off. If this is going to be a blanket, if you're gonna continue on making a blanket, then you really need to work all of your ends in, okay? But I wanted to show you this is what the back looks like. Now, what I decided to do, and you could see some of these stitches, there's no way, um, of not seeing some stitches for this that I'm aware of. If you can figure it out, let me know. But um, I really wanted this the front to be pretty much seamless. So that's how I'm gonna show you. But if you're making a blanket, what I decided to do also was to make, just take one color, a more neutral color within this, not white, not black or anything, but of course you could do that. Um, but I just used this tan like color to bring them all in together, okay? And that color is going to be the same color that I'm going to crochet these two panels together with to make our pillow. So also, if I didn't make that clear in the beginning, you do need two panels of these to then put together, to sandwich together, sew or crochet together to put your pillow in, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut off a long piece of this neutral tan color. Got this lined up and now what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing the puffs together. Okay. You definitely want to make sure that this side is to the front and this side is to the back. Okay. You can tell the difference. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sew this together, trying to make it seamless from the front. And the way to do that is to not sew down into these edges right here. That's where you would think you would want to sew. Like you'd line them up like this and sew like that. But if you do that, you're going to see everything. So what we want to do is we want to hide this in here. So to do that, we have to sew on top of this work. So I'm going to go right over here and right over here, right at the edge of the side here. And that's where I'm gonna pull in. I'm gonna leave a little piece hanging off and we'll sew that in later. And then again, you're gonna pick up over here on the sides of your work and just pull it in like this. So we're just trying to make sure that we stay away from the inside edge. And there's no specificness to this. You're just literally, and then now you can tighten up once you get a couple stitches there, or it'll keep moving out like that. Um, but you're just gonna keep pulling from the top here of your puff and putting stitches in like this. If you were making a blanket out of this, it might be more beneficial to maybe go in and out like this way, maybe to go down to make the blanket. Uh, like I said, I haven't done it, so I'm not sure. Maybe that'll be a different video. So going all the way down to the end, making sure that I still stay away from my edge. And then because I, I don't want there to be a hole in the middle, I'm actually going to go through the end here and out through the other puff. Again, trying to stay away from the edge. And that's just to pull that together, okay? And then I will go into my next color. And again, working from the outside, trying to stay away from the edge. We'll pull in like this.
And then again, when I get to the end, I'm gonna pull up on the back and go over here to my other color, making sure again to stay away from my sides. And that's just to pull that together to make sure that I don't have any holes in my work. And then I'll go into my next one. Again, working in the sides. Just like this. So you're gonna keep doing this all the way down and When we get to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like and then we're gonna work on getting all of our ends tidied up, okay? I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so I finished sewing this whole row together here and this is what it looks like. I'm gonna show you from the front. Um, this is what it looks like. So it is very seamless. When it stretches even, you can't see too much. So it looks really lovely to do it that way. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna work in your ends. If you have any pieces pointing from the front, just um, put them on your darning needle and push them through to the other side. So I'll just go out like this and push them through, okay? And take this one and push it through, okay? Just like that. If for any reason you have some places where like right here in the edge where I was telling you to try to sew it together, if you have any holes or anything that are really visible, I mean, you're going to see some holes a little bit, but what you can do is you can take like this color piece that you have and work in over that hole right there so you can't see it, okay? So that is something that you can do if you have a problem with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna free up all of my little pieces that I need to work in and then I'll come right back and I'm going to show you how to put the pieces together to make the pillow. And I just want to show you this real quick while I was working on this side. I said, oh, I might want to show them how to work these ends in in case you don't know how. So any ends that you need to work in that'll be, you know, like I said, you can't, um, you can't tie off or anything. You're just going to go like, see, this is coming out of the pink. So I'm going to go right through here over to the pink side. And then I'm just going to go straight through the purple with the purple into the puff. And I'm gonna do that three times, because three times a charm, even when you're working inside a puff. And then you're just gonna pull tight, cut off, and then that's gonna go back into the puff, okay? So that's how you're gonna work on your ends. Okay guys, so we have both of our panels facing um, the inside now. So I've got the inside of this and the inside of that one is facing together. And now we're gonna crochet this together. So I've brought in my yarn over here. I'm just using this um, beige yarn to pull all of this together. And we're gonna bring that in and right in the same place that we brought that in, we're going to do a half double crochet. And you're gonna half double crochet all the way down. There's not an exactness to this. Um, I don't even have an exact count because it totally depends on uh, how you did yours. Um, but try to keep the number the same for each puff and that'll try to even it out some for you. So you're literally just gonna go through and do a half double crochet. Now, when you go down, try to make sure that you're going through a significant amount of yarn. You don't wanna pull up on one strand so that it leaves a hole, okay? And then when you work your way around, you wanna make sure that you leave a hole on a side for you to stuff your pillow in. I do not leave one side all the way open, okay? Because it's just too gapey. So you wanna leave just enough space to stuff your pillow in and get it situated, and then you'll half double crochet down. Now, when you get to the corner, what I want you to do when you get to the corner is right in this corner spot, you're gonna do one half double crochet, chain one and one half double crochet, and then keep going till you get another corner and then repeat that. Okay, so that's all you're gonna do to piece this together. So once I get this, all um, my border done all around for this, 
Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to put the pillow in and how to close it up. Hey guys, so I've crocheted all the way around my pillow. I've tried to raise my camera up as much as I can. I have a small desk area, so I'm just trying to, you know, show you everything that I can. But as you can see, I've gone all the way around with that half double crochet and I've left a little piece. I wanted to show you, this is about how much I left. I'm gonna pull this out really far so it doesn't come undone. Make sure that my yarn doesn't get um, tangled in there. And then I will take my pillow here and I will fold it down and I will start stuffing it. I will start stuffing it into the actual pillow itself like this. And then once I get it all the way in, I'll flatten it out. Okay, so I'll be back in just a second. I'm sorry, I just can't get all this on camera. Okay, so I've got the pillow all shoved in there. And what I did was, is I just took my hand, I made sure the pillow was just right within the um, pillow, uh, the shell for the pillow. I made sure everything was pushed out right. And so then I'm just left with this little hole here. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep half double crocheting all the way down work my corner and then I'll work in my ends, okay? And that'll be it. That's all you have to do for this lovely pillow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you need anything or have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can ask below, obviously, in the YouTube comments section and I try to get to everyone. Um, but if for some reason you're not comfortable with that or I don't find the comment, you can Gmail. I have a Gmail below. You can reach me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, and you can also follow me in all those places. I would really appreciate it. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that notify me bell below so that you can get notified of my future videos. And please like and share, guys. Sharing helps more than anything, and I really appreciate it. I'll see you again soon for a super fun, easy project. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.